So in the past, we've taken a look before at Pop! OS 2010, which was a desktop-oriented fork of Ubuntu by System76 that had some tweaks made to it to make it a more complete solution and a bit easier for gaming. To keep chugging along with this trend, I think we should take a look at some other Linux distributions, and today we're going to check out another desktop-focused distro, Manjaro version 20.2.1. Why can't they just make the version number simple or just give it a name or something? Come on. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. To give you all a little background first, Manjaro is based off of Arch Linux in the same way that Pop! OS is based off of Ubuntu. The Arch developers take care of the base system and the Manjaro folks make some tweaks to make it their own. Namely, they added a graphical installer, which helps newer folks out a lot compared to Arch's text-based installer, made it really easy to set it up with the desktop environment, which by default is Xface for Manjaro, and by default, it uses Linux kernel LTS releases instead of following the latest public release like Arch does, though you can change that if you so choose. Being based off of Arch grants the user access to the latest software updates almost immediately, so you don't have to wait long for the latest and snazziest Firefox or Chromium updates, and also access to the Arch user repository, aka AUR, which is essentially a large software repository supported by the community. The quicker updates means you don't have to wait so long for larger software improvements, like when Firefox switched over to their Quantum Web Engine a few years ago to improve what web page rendering performance, and the AOR makes it really easy to install all kinds of other software that may not be provided in the base repositories. There are some other advantages that we can go over, but let's move on and start looking at Manjaro. Installing Manjaro is actually pretty easy. It uses the Calamaris system installer to guide you through the installation process, and if you recall back to that Pop! OS video I made a few weeks ago, it's pretty similar to that process, just with some of the steps reordered. You have your usual location settings, partition layout, and user account set up, just again in a different order than Pop! OS had. There's nothing really out of the ordinary here, except notably they have a separate window to select which Office productivity suite to install. This is because they worked out a sponsorship with FreeOffice, and it actually used to be installed just by default, but after some community backlash, the solution ended up being this selection window you see here. Feel free to choose what you want. I'm gonna go with LibreOffice. After you finish up the rest of the installation steps, which at this point is pretty much just look over the summary and confirm your settings, and waiting for everything to install. There we go, the installation is complete. I'm gonna go reboot my machine now and then hop into the actual installed OS. All right, here's the login screen for Manjaro. I'm gonna go ahead and log in really quick. And there we are, we're at the main Manjaro desktop with Xface. So the first boot up into Manjaro grants you with a very customized version of the Xface desktop, assuming you chose that version. You can also choose installer images with GNOME, Mate, or some other desktop environments, but Xface really is Manjaro's bread and butter. It has a very Windowsy feel to it with a kind of start button at the bottom left to get access to your applications, log out and turn off the computer and stuff. You have a window taskbar at the bottom. Let me just open up an application to show you. ba -de da Yeah, here at the bottom, you see like you have your window list. At the bottom right, you have a lot of like your system status stuff, like your volume, networking, update managers, uh, current time, all that kind of stuff. I, it's not exactly like Windows, I know, but it should feel close enough and familiar enough much like the Cinnamon desktop that ships with Linux Mint, if you're familiar with that. So, running updates in Banjar was actually pretty similar to any other Linux distribution. You have your option of going with the terminal. Let me just open up one really quick. Then, this package manager for Manjaro is pacman. So what you would do is you run sudo pacman minus capital S, lowercase y, lowercase u. It's not entirely intuitive, like you would have like an apt update or send to it, or not sent to us, yum update, but well, this is the command to run the updates with. So I'm gonna type in my password. It's gonna uh, go ahead and grab all the latest repository information. So a lot of times what you'll see with Manjaro and a lot of Arch based distributions is after a while, like the key rings and stuff will up update. So you will have kind of two steps to kind of run through first with updating. So here first I hit yes, it's gonna do some, some stuff. And then here's where all the big chunk of updates come in. All kinds of stuff, not the prettiest list, Lots of updates. If I was going to update here, I would I would just press enter and it would run through all the updates. Right now I'm going to press control C and get out of this. Then I'm going to show you the updates with the update manager that's provided with Manjaro. 
So the other way to update your system is to go to the bottom right where you see this little shield icon with an eye, double click that to open up the update manager. Or what you can do is go to that start menu again, type in software, click on add slash remove software, and then go to the updates tab. So from here, you have a large list of updates that can be installed. You can just go ahead and click apply at the bottom to install them all. Or you can deselect, say, if you want to keep Firefox the same version, just deselect it and then hit apply. I'm going to reselect Firefox and hit apply. Type in my password. Here's a little transaction summary. I'm just going to hit apply, accepting the changes, and off it goes. As you can see, it has to get 1.1 gigabyte of packages. So like I said, Arch Linux updates lots of software very quickly as everything gets released. So if you wait a while to update, updates can be quite a bit bigger than normal. So the update is actually done now, and I got a pop-up saying that a restart is required for the changes to take effect. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Just close out of everything. System is up to date. Close out all that and reboot. So installing software is very similar to like you have in Pop! OS or any other Linux distribution as well. You can use a terminal method, which let's say let's open up a terminal. The method to do so is sudo pacman minus S or minus capital S and then type in a software package that you want to install. Let's just say Steam. Type in your password, hit yes, and then boom, Steam is installed. And let's just verify that by typing in Steam. Look, yep, Steam's installed there. Another way you can do so is by typing in software again, clicking on add slash remove software. And then you have here where you can browse the software that's currently installed. So here on this window, you have a somewhat okay-ish a software installer, not the most intuitive program, but it does get the job done. I'm assuming this is some sort of list of like most popular software to install. Like see, we already have Firefox and GNU image manipulation program installed, LibreOffice installed, etc. But we can scroll down a little bit and install other popular ones like Blender, Inkscape, or even VirtualBox. So up here at the top left, I'm gonna click on this little magnifying glass for search icon. And let's go ahead and say we want to install Chromium. There we go. Chromium is the first result. Let's click install, hit apply, choose optional dependencies. I'm going to leave this alone for now. A lot of times software will have features or other options available to it. If you install other libraries, you don't have to install them. If you don't want them, I'm going to leave this alone for now and just click choose. Type in my password to confirm. And then here's the transaction summary, hit apply. Then it's going to go ahead and download and install Chromium. Look at that pretty quick. So the default software selection that you find in Manjaro is more or less what you'd expect. You have a you have a web browser, in this case Firefox. You have Thunderbird for your email client. I chose LibreOffice, but you can choose FreeOffice in the installation. You have Gparted to manage your partitions. Nothing too crazy here that I've noticed. One thing I did notice is that you do have is that TimeShift is installed by default for running backups and restores. And then some other multimedia applications are installed as well. Uh, such as, what's it called, Audacious. I'm not very familiar with Audacious for listening to music. I'm used to like Clementine or Rhythmbox or something. I'm, I'm going to assume this is a another decent music app. But realistically, who doesn't just use like Spotify or something these days? So just like with any OS, there's a lot more that I could dig into, get into like the nooks and crannies of things, but that should be enough to get you started with Manjaro. So now let's go over why you'd want to even use it in the first place. Like I mentioned earlier, it's based on Arch, which gets packages and updates pretty much as soon as they are released to the public. You'll often see popular software like Firefox and Chromium getting updates within a few hours, which for a lot of people is desirable over a fixed release distro like Debian, which gets new releases about every two years, and even Ubuntu, which gets new releases every six months. Not only does this result in getting access to newer features in a more timely manner, like I mentioned earlier, it also is really helpful for gaming systems, especially ones that use the latest hardware, since you have access to more up-to-date Linux kernels and driver versions. This personally came in handy for me when AMD's Ryzen 1000 processors were released a few years ago. I ended up buying one to play around with as a powerful 8-core virtual machine server for my home lab, and the only Linux distribution available that I trusted with a Linux kernel version that supported Ryzen at that point was Arch. So yes, for a short time I ran Arch on one of my servers until Ryzen support was wider spread in Linux. The reason you'd want to use Manjaro over plain old Arch is that the Arch installer is all text-based and not very intuitive to most users. And even when you do get it installed, you need to piece together everything. You need like a desktop environment, 
window manager, networking, and any other software that you want. It's an easy-ish task if you've done it before or are at least getting some help, but it does deter a lot of people who aren't comfortable with this process and don't want to go through the whole process again in case they miss something. Manjaro, on the other hand, makes the installation and setup process a lot easier, providing a GUI to guide you through most of the setup, handling a lot of the smaller details for you, like which file system to use, and installing a bootloader, and provides you a working desktop of your choice without needing to install all the correct packages and set the right services to start at boot time. Neat. It's almost like an Arch without the pain distro. Overall, even though you still do get some of the idiosyncrasies of Arch, like where everything changes a lot more frequently compared to Ubuntu or Linux Mint as you run updates, and you don't want to wait too long before updating as waiting too long can create a headache when you finally do update, Manjaro is still a great distribution if you're bored with Ubuntu and its derivatives, or if you just want something slightly more up-to-date for your use case. Be sure to let me know in the comments section below your thoughts on Manjaro and which distro I should take a look at next. Of course, like the video and subscribe if you liked it to help me keep making more of these videos, and go on over to the BitGoblin Discord server and join the community. I hope you have a wonderful day.